Welcome, this is Social Studies, Voices Across America. I'm Bill Wood. And I am Peter Goldsmith. We promised this discussion. Did voters want change or not in 2016? Were they tired of stalemates in Washington and Congress? Obama campaigned on change in 2008 and 2012. Now Trump campaigned on change in 2016. The stalemates needing change in 2020 include America's war on children, our confusing political labels, and the big philosophical issue, security versus freedom in America. Peter, do American voters want change uh, from our war on children or change in Washington, period? Bill, I hate to say this because you know I'm all for change, but no, they do not. The statistics that I've looked at and the articles that I've read say about 52 to 54 percent of the population would like change, but that leaves another 45 to 48 percent who don't want change, and they have a lot of reasons for not wanting change. They like it the way it is. As crazy as that may sound, Bill, that's what the information reveals. I find that hard to believe, Peter. The exit polls that I found in 2016 said four in 10 voters were hungry for change, and those voters overwhelmingly favored Republican Donald Trump. He campaigned as a change agent, just like Obama did in 08 and 12. They voted for Trump, and the change they got was change that they weren't looking for. There's no question that that the president's approval rating has dipped considerably and continues to dip because of the choices that he's made. Most people really don't want it. But most people are really looking at change in a larger sense, Bill, and most people feel uncomfortable when something changes, even if it's a small thing like what night you have to throw your trash out, or a large thing like what does the government think about change? What change are they going to make? Who and how is it going to affect everybody? A lot of people are saying, you know what? I don't want change. I get a loss of control. Change interferes with autonomy. It makes people feel like they've lost control over what they knew. It's the old adage of the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. So they'll live with the devil, even though he's sticking them in the you-know-where with his pitchfork. Yeah, and that, that nearly, again, back to these exit polls, nearly 7 in 10 voters said they were unhappy with the way the government is working. 25% they were outright angry at the way government was working. They wanted somebody to change that, and that's, I firmly believe that. They wanted somebody to get something done in Washington, and they were more interested in being governed and not just demand to do it my way. And now we have that problem. And I think this is going to be uh, an issue in the upcoming election in November 3rd. I keep mentioning that date because it's so important. I think that's going to be an issue because they want people who will govern and not just demand like the Tea Party or some ultra conservatives and uh, ultra liberals, too, uh, that will just demand do it my way or or else I won. So I get to write history and I get to uh, say how things are done. Well, I see, Bill, I don't agree with that. I think a good proportion of the American people say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. You're the government. You make the rules. You tell me and I'll follow the rules. It's a lemming mentality. Okay. We understand most of us who are free thinking individuals where the government, and I'm not talking about Democrats, and Republicans, I'm talking about normal human beings. We understand where the government has gone off the rails. We understand what's going on, but there's a great part of our population who says, let the government do what they're doing. They know what they're doing and they know how to do it. They don't know what they're doing and they don't know how to do it. And that's the problem. And I think when you talk about this president now versus President Obama, I think the the election of this person was based upon the anger over Obama. He promised hope and change, and to many people, he didn't deliver that. To many of us, he did. And I think they said, oh, no, get this guy out. Get this liberal. And there was some racism in there, too. Let's not be naive. And let's put in a good, strong white guy who will run the, the ship 
correctly as we want it to be, and we won't have to worry about anything. And I think that's what happened. On that level, I kind of agree. Three-fourths of those, this is from the exit polls again, three-fourths of those uh, who voted for Trump were angry. They were angry. Uh, and six in 10 voters said the country is in the wrong track. Now, whether that is because of nothing getting done in Washington or because of uh, the country's on the wrong track if we can elect a black man as president. So uh, you, you can never go wrong uh, dipping into the racist card uh, in American politics. But I strongly believe that all of these numbers in the exit polls, uh, of course, there's lies, damn lies and statistics, but you can't go wrong looking at these numbers and saying that people want to change. Well, you know, Bill, that's interesting because I think what happened here is the Republicans did a terrific hatchet job on Hillary Clinton and people voted against Hillary Clinton, not necessarily for the president who we have right now. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you something else, which is good about the president that we have right now. And hold on to your seat. I'm not voting that way. Believe <laughs> Hillary Clinton would have been business like usual. The same thing going on and on and on. This person came into the White House and everyone said, oh, oh wait a minute. We need to take sides on this. So it got people, as I always say to you, the young people say it got them woke and they realized, uh uh-uh. This isn't what I want. This isn't how I describe myself as an American. This is a step away from fascism. So that's where we're going to hopefully come out of this thing. I hope. Yeah. Well, you know, and and that, so let's deal with this issue of labels, conservative versus liberals. And some are making liberal a four letter word close to profanity nowadays, especially after eight years of Obama. They've embedded conservatism in American politics and conservatives ran 24 of the last 40 years since Reagan. They want change from Obama. But now that, that the conservatives are in power, they want to maintain power. And I do say that, uh, like I uh, indicated before, that people are more interested in ruling and not in governing. They don't want compromise. They don't want anything to say that I gave in because they're afraid that uh, in the in their and this kind of goes to what you're you're arguing is that uh, you know we won. So if you're going to uh, compromise with them, I'm voting you out because we won. I want people to rule and not govern. I agree with that. But here's another thing. I don't like the word liberal at all. What I like is the word progressive. Yeah. yeah. A conservative is someone who tells you what happened yesterday and therefore it should happen again today. And lives Wrong. there. Yeah, right. Exactly. A progressive says this is what's happening today and this is what can possibly happen for the betterment of society tomorrow and down the road. And that's the difference here. The difference is forget all these labels. Like you said, liberal is a dirty word. Why? It means inclusive. I want to be liberal. I want to be open. I want to listen. I want to be inclusive as opposed to the conservatives who basically don't want to listen to anything. You know, their platform was whatever this, you know, they were Marxists in the way of a Groucho Marxist, whatever it is, I'm against it. And and that was their whole platform. So now They've got us bottled into nothing. Yeah, and the labels, again, have become dirty words because right now, like socialism, uh, they're, they're equating socialism and liberalism. They're forgetting that all of the things that uh, we are arguing for, you know, expansion of, of uh, unemployment, uh, to add the $600 a week, all of the things that we want the government to do for us is a socialistic way of, of doing it, you know? And then the government is handing out things. Right now, they're equating fascism, socialism, and Nazism. I told you, where I live, I live in the country, as you know, you've been in my house. Uh, there's a woman down the lane here who's got a big sign, get rid of socialism, vote for the mental case in the White House. Okay, she doesn't say that, but that's what it is. OK. And and I said, fine, get rid of socialism. Give me back your stimulus check. 
Give me back your Social Security. Exactly. Give me back your Medicare and your Medicaid. Give me back the government taking care of you when you need to go to a hospital. Whether you're insured or not, you yeah. still go and to an emergency. And the 20 or 30 million people who are signed up on the yeah. Affordable Care Act, yeah. Yeah. You know, they're, so, vo- so, they're voting for Trump while Trump's in the courts trying to get rid of it. So e- that's my point. So, you know, they don't even know what they're doing. So forget the label. Look at what they're doing. Look at what this responds to. Let's take Bernie Sanders for, for, for an instance. Good or bad, I'm not, we don't want to comment on Bernie Sanders right now. That guy wants to break up Wall Street, wants to keep profits down, wants to uh, make uh, CEOs not have 503 times as, as much money as an average worker gets paid. They get paid that. And everyone hates him. He's a socialist. He's no good. Really? Would you not like to put some more money in your pocket and have your boss take a little less? They don't think about that. It's just sheer stupidity. Yeah. I mean, and, and look at some of the social democratic countries in Europe where the people get paid a living wage. They get decent vacations. They get all their medical care taken care of. And, uh, and they're schooling. And they're, and they're schooling, schooling taken care yeah. of. Yeah. And then you so look at this it's, stuff. It's just stupidity. Yeah. They, equate, they equate socialism with Trotskyism and all those extreme forms. Let's define what we're talking about before we talk about it, rather than going off on an emotion and getting, get rid of socialism. Fine. Give me back your stimulus check. Give me back your yeah, right. Yeah, well, don't, don't take that, you know. Yeah. Well, they won't say anything. They'll just shoot me when I try to go in your house. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing now is the the ultimate question of uh, security versus uh, freedom, and that's we've talked around that, but that's where that's what we have left. Are we so afraid of freedom that we're going to give up our security? I think it was Eric Fromm or one of a futurist in, back in the fifties wrote a book that said people in democracy be willing to give up their freedoms in order to have a little more security. And that might be where we're on the edge of right now. Oh, I don't think we're on the edge of it, Bill. I think we're in the middle of it. Uh, I'll tell you what. We have a Patriot Act in this country, okay? That is totally destroying your freedoms. Totally, okay? Uh, I can look at any book, the government, meaning government, look at any book that you read in the library, where you went, what you're doing. You and I both know you carry a credit card. They know exactly what you've been doing. They have thousands of cameras all over the streets, and it's for your Security. Yeah, your cell the, phone locks in the cell towers yeah, and yeah. they can find the government. The government makes you so frightened of your own freedom that they get you to agree to be under their thumb. If you don't do what we tell you, someone's going to come and get you. Was the Native Americans at first, and it was the people of color. Oh, now we have the Muslims, and now we have the terror. You know, okay, here's a, here's a perfect one for you. They started the airport. A crazy man went on an airplane and he had a bomb in his shoe, in the heel of his shoe, right? So now they have to, you have to take off your shoes when you go online. However, if you're 75 years old, which one of us who's talking right now will soon be in about a year or so, I don't have to take off my shoes. So when I was 74 and nine months, I could be a terrorist with a bomb in my shoe. But when I'm 75 in two weeks, I'm okay. I mean, let, let's put some sense into what we're governing. Let's not make these boilerplate, random, crazy things uh, that have no meaning to us. But the people are so frightened and the government keeps them that way that, yes, as, as, a, as a nation, yes, we will give up our security and our free. We will give up our freedom for security. We will. We will, we are. You're you're right. That's that on this we might agree. I okay. think that people will give up their freedoms for security if somebody busts down your door and you start shooting them. Who are you? And they kill you. They say, "Well, what did he shoot us for?" Is it because you busted into my house and started spraying the place with with gunfire? Uh, well, I'm a cop. Well, I didn't know that. You didn't say that when you busted in. So. Uh, there's all this is going on in the culture right now. I still believe that freedoms are necessary. I don't want to give up the ability for us to have this podcast, for example. In China, they're not allowed to see what we see on the internet. It's what they see on the internet is controlled. You know, we we reached the point in world history where we have more more information available to us. 
and we're making decisions where we don't know what's going on or why. Well, you know, Bill, media funnels into this perfectly. There's a television show on whose name I will not rem- will not mention, but I used to watch it and I stopped watching because this was an issue. What happened is the police broke into this guy's house, didn't, didn't warn him, just knocked the door down. The guy was sitting with his wife and children. And I think his mother or mother-in-law was there. They were, they were uh, immigrants. Get up against the wall. Blah, 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 blah. You did this, you did No, no, no. I was here. Oh, oh, they proved. Okay, we're really sorry. And they left. Meanwhile, the poor guy and his family and children are shocked for who knows how long. And by the way, the guy doesn't have a front door. And they left. That's an image that's okay. Because it's a pro-police show. Well, this is not a TV show. I'm talking about Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. The police barged in and opened fire. Her boyfriend uh, fired back. Who are you? And you're shooting at me. I'm shooting at you. She was killed, uh, 16 bullets or something. And he had he was wounded. So we're at that point now where we are. we have to make a decision for America. And this is the most important election we've ever had because we're talking about a normal person becoming president or a crazy man becoming more fascistic than he's ever been. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Period. End of, end of story. There you go. There you, you can't go. You get any plainer than that. Peter, it's been great to talk to you, partner. Till the next time, take care of each other and respect each other. And as always, peace. You can get this podcast. You can tell someone else about this podcast. It's available through YouTube, through iTunes, and through Google Play. Let's hear from you. Let us know what you think so that we can be in community with you. And there is a way to contact us. That's at peter at agnetislife.com or bill at agnetislife.com. That's our email addresses. Let's hear from you. Let's open up the forum. Thank you.